one you need to eliminate. And that's all color. All color. Pink plants are even even worse than, than white soul. So basically we're going all the way back to the root. Mm -hmm. It's gonna lead you there regardless. Mm -hmm. Cause like I said, the more I start purging myself all out, I start seeing crust coming out of my ears. Where did this come from? Because the body, we didn't notice it, it actually was molding itself a certain way through all of that stuff accumulating. So let's start breaking up throughout the body. Stuff start coming out the nose a certain way. And then last but not least, using the bathroom, especially in the number two, for me started hurting. Mm. Oh, because you were vegetarian and you wasn't eating anything? Right, you're cleaning yourself out even more. And see, everybody have a little, probably I should say, most people have a little slight, one side of the body is bigger than the other. Okay, let's put it like this. So if you're sitting there and you're purging yourself out, when you were eating throughout the years, your body probably got more of a curvature to it. So when it starts straightening itself out even more when you're purging out, uh, when you do try to eat something again, it kind of brings it back so you feel it more when you're using the bathroom. You ain't feel it before. The body got used to that. Mm -hmm. You want to keep that going back straight again. So that's what I felt on my journey. So, mm. oh, man. Yeah, Neil just went to a chiropractor guy and they, you know, were weighing both legs, you know, and they saw he had 30 pounds more on one side than on the other. Right, see? He probably don't even feel it. He didn't even feel it. the body got pain, used to it. Yeah, now he's like getting it treated. But right. So if you're going on that breath during journey, that body start doing this homeostasis, is balancing itself out back into its perfection. So we got perfect bodies. Everybody do. Where did we get it from? My mama gave it to us. She gave us a perfect body. But we're running around talking about this unperfect. I gotta get new lips, new breasts, new butt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect. Perfect in this realm. That's why we live in. So always, once you understand you already got perfection you're working with, all you're doing is trying to get self-knowledge on how to use it. Oh, man. Now, what we put up? Breatharian and mortal hybrid. Because a lot of people say, why we got teeth? Why we got intestines and all of this? Well, because we're hybrids. That's why you're making the transformation. And right now, they got, what, hybrid vehicles that could go off of gas or electricity or whatever. And I got a friend who got a hybrid car. Now listen at this. But he never put gas in it before. Now he could, but he just never did. It's the same with us. But see, with us, we had these vehicles, we just kept putting fossil fuels in it. You just never went off the electricity yet. So you can augment the vehicle to start going off with electricity. And then your car is going off of gas, right? Now, just because your car is going off of gas out there, that means that you got to get rid of it if you want to make it into a hybrid. They got kits right now where you can upgrade your car <laughs> to a hybrid. But they far-fetched, do some rewiring and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's there. Mm -hmm. Bypass the gas tank when you flip the switch, it'll go to the other mechanism. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're doing with ourselves. And when we was looking at the Kachari Mudra yesterday, when we were saying, um, looking at that video, they were just saying you're bypassing certain systems in the body. You don't need them. Once other systems wake up on where you're going, now this is going to get good. So people can understand if we're hybrids and making this transition is easy. Because now we're in the age where we keep hearing that we're light beings and all this other stuff. But what make us different, different than other animals, we can make a plan. So when we talk about longevity, immortality, or healing ourselves, we can do it now. You get you a good plan. So you got a good plan here, huh? Yeah, a good plan, but it's very simple for me. Right. Well, that, if it's simple, that makes it a good plan. Yeah, it shouldn't be hard. And this plan is only for weeks so that I can adjust. At the end of the week. Right. And the reason why I did that is because I did a 108 day fast. And after that fast, I wasn't ready for the next. For the next phase. For right. the next phase of it. So um, my plan after this class, one week. But that's powerful. 108 days, that's what? Six weeks? Oh, you was rolling. 
Yeah, but the, the problem with that Von is Von that... Yeah, the problem with that uh -huh. is... Von Sevdovia. Yeah. Von yeah. Sevdovia. The problem with that, I was trying to heal cancer, and I did heal the tumor, but mm -hmm. I went back to eating. Ah. And it came back. Right. It's a little stressed when you came back to eating, yeah. Yeah. Sure. But uh, if, your, if your body is not ready and your mind is necessary, yeah. things will keep rolling. Well, see, that's what we've been learning too on how many videos is out there. When you stop eating, you can starve basically certain diseases and eliminate them. Yeah. Now, that's powerful. The body heals itself from not eating. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a memo now. Like we said, in Russia, they had the, what, 40 years of all that experimentation dealing with it, it just ain't here in the West. So the knowledge is out here on the planet. So now we got YouTube, at least, and the internet. We can find these things. So that's what makes it good now. Yes. We in there yes. now. But making a plan, that's what we got to do. So you made that 180 day fast that time, but you just didn't have a plan after it at that time and stuff. Yeah, it's 180. But, 108. But now your knowledge has increased, so let's hear your plan. So my plan for Sunday through Monday is dry fasting. And I'm going to add, with the dry fasting, no wash, brushing my teeth. Right. Or bathing. So you're going hard dry. Hard, yes. Yes. Because as soon as you, like what you were saying, as soon as you put water on the body, it changes the whole way the body's acting. It uh, speed up the elimination toxin. And it's harder to... Uh, Staying in that stage of uh, uh, intoxication. So if you not put in water in your system at all, it's easier. It slow slow down the process. Right. So one day of dry fasting is what? Three days of uh, water. Three days of water fasting. Yeah. See, that's powerful yeah, in it itself. Is. Not eating or drinking is just that powerful. Yeah. All this right. This is natural. This is a natural state for us. The natural state. No drinking, no eating. So that's awesome. So you got this. And that's what I told people that one time, like I said. It's easier to be a breatharian than it is to be a fruitarian. Well, light years. It ain't even the same. It ain't even in the same ballpark. <laughs> we way somewhere else talking something else. But this is good. You got that in your plan. And then the other thing is the meditation that I learned. Oh, man. Here we go. Meditation is the foundation. Here we go. I didn't do that the last time. Right, which a lot of people don't. And they want to go on a breatharian journey, they hear about it with no meditation. It ain't going to work like that. Meditation is the tool to transform you so you can get these other energy sources. Train the body, retraining it. That's a, rewiring the car. That's what we're doing. To turn it into its hybrid. Yes, meditation is very important. When we do retreats, when I lead retreats and for, for people, dry fast and always meditation and always uh, outside activities like walking or do uh, Kaigong or whatever. Right. It's it's a must. It's uh, a must. Otherwise, if people laying down and like uh, thinking like about oh how bad I feeling right now, so many intoxicants, it's not a good. Now they listen can, at they, this. They can lie. And even you kind of said it. When you try to go without food and you just land there, it's harder. When you're doing something, it seems like you get more energy. Right. That's the whole ball game. That's the whole and that's how the 21 day process started out. People would just slam somewhere without food or water. Bang, uh uh. Now we're changing the ball game. We're doing activities to keep it flowing. Right. That's a whole other ball game. You'd be surprised what the body can do. This is the little kid we got to bring along. <laughs> She yeah. gone. All right, let's hear this plan. So that's um, Sunday through Monday. All right. And then Tuesday, I'm going to go back to my liquid. The liquid journey. And my meditation. Right. My tea gone. What kind of liquid? Tea. Green tea. And then water with lime. I would suggest you, instead of green tea, any herbal tea. Herbal tea. Don't uh, poison you, yourself with caffeine. Caffeine is very hard intoxicant in the body. Okay. Yeah. I will change it. Just any herbal tea, chamomile tea, or mint tea, if you want a tea at all. Now, liquids is awesome. Even though we're talking on live levels of not eating and drinking, liquids is awesome because what qualifies something as a liquid 
is it don't hold the form of the container. So that right there is telling us that the molecules or the behavior of them is still going a lot faster than something that's solid. Right. So that's why people yeah. have so many benefits going more in a liquefied diet. And even if you're eating, what do they say? Chew your food into a liquid. Chew your food to the liquid, chew your liquid uh, to, to become your food. Right. This is the rule. Even when you do, uh, do liquid, it's an uh, external uh, subject. So it's not native for your body. So you should uh, mix your saliva with what you in, uh, put, uh, put inside. So when I'm drinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. See, we're learning now. See, now listen at this. Gnosis. You ever heard of that word, gnosis? Yes. And some say it means knowledge. But what it's dealing with is the knower of knowledge. The knower of knowledge. That means a person is actually applying it. He knows this knowledge. Now, the difference between uh, why we are going into gnosis type knowledge instead of a belief. But theorism isn't a belief system. Because a belief system is a child has a strong belief system because it will follow his parents don't know where it's taking whether it's right or wrong, it just believe and trust. But most people are stuck in belief systems with no knowledge. But when you learn knowledge, then you know for yourself how to apply, what to do, what it's going to do for you. So that's why when you get older, you break away from the parents. You got your knowledge now. You don't need to follow them. <laughs> this is making sense now, huh? So we don't want to make this into a belief. You just follow on somebody blindly. Uh huh. We can learn the knowledge on what to apply. That's why you're making a plan. I'm making a plan. <laughs> Whoa. All right. What else we got? So that was Tuesday through, um, Tuesday through Wednesday. And then Wednesday through Saturday, I'm going to do intermittent fasting. Where that was between 6 p.m. and 12 noon, I'll have one meal a day. Mm -hmm. My tea, herbal tea, my green. Herbal, yeah. Right. And um, I'll do my meditation. Right. Then that'll be it. That's, a, that's an awesome plan. You can't beat that. You ain't denied yourself nothing. But it's a good plan. And try to know. Once a week. Not using salt. Yes. No salt. In your All right, don't be too hard on her. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the breatharian journey. People don't see that. They making these plans. In a week, I ain't going to eat nothing, put tape on their mouth, no meditation, no this, deny themselves everything, even though they still know they want to do it. You ain't got to do that. That's it right there. That's a healthy plan. Wow. And that meditation behind it. Like we've been meditating for four days now. Energy is a whole nother ball game. Ain't it? We feel totally different than when we came. And it don't end. I don't care who you is. I've been doing this for 20 years, and every time I come back into it, it's like more coming. Still transforming. It don't end. So that's why this is the, what? Immortal message. Immortal, immortality ain't no belief system. You got to lay out a plan. All systems in the body now, most of the organs got, what, different periods of when they regenerate. I believe it's like every five days for the stomach, every 30 days or 27 to 30 days for the skin. You got new skin. So if you're in these cycles, you can make a plan around it. And that plan will work wonders. She's going to be a whole other person in what? Well, let me just give it a time period. 90 days. Probably don't even know who she is. That's my plan. This six months. A year. That's another, that's another being. That's the breath there in process. Then next year she can up, update the plan again. Relook at it. That's how you do it. And what I like about this is that at the end of the week, I can adjust. I can look and see, okay, what went well, what did go well, what did I need to adjust, and go yeah. forward the next week. Go forward the next week. See, that's the plan. So that's why people say to me, when did you make your breath there in transition? There wasn't no transition. I was on one plan. When did this start? When did it stop? Ain't none. It's a continuance. It don't end. Wow. I woke up today that I need to go 
All of us, if we did to go get breakfast or whatever, I know I didn't. Feeling good. This is part of, it's the continuance of immortality. Body feels good. Why you want to compromise it? It'll just keep going. Oh, man. And if a person chooses to get something once you get on these levels, you can pick it up and lay it back down because you like being like this. You know you can, you can do it. You're a hybrid. Whoa. Well, we got here to, no, we done heard it then, huh? That's it. That's the plan. Simple. Nice and simple. It ain't got to be complicated. Oh, man. This is all simple, ain't it? We just have to get back our mind. We lost our mind. The blind follow the blind, you all fall in the ditch. That's what we've been doing, listening to everybody else. <laughs> but the good thing about it is that meditation is the foundation, that movement on what we living in. If we're living in something. Oh, can you do me a favor and look up a definition for air? Yes. You got that good, quick... How long he already no liquid, no water? In, in, uh, without break? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Oh. I did this so many times. Do you want me to turn up music on? Sorry, it's okay. Yeah, it's not hurting nothing. Okay. Yeah. That's not so There's your air too. There was a time I used to say this month, this amount of months. I don't do that no more. Mm -hmm. It's just been a wow. That's all I can say, right. Yeah. And then people usually come with the water thing, and I'll say that's the long, that's the wrong question to ask the breatharian. Why is that? Water is born and ain't got no calories. Well, go back to boredom. We're creatures of pleasure. Once you master this skill, you don't even want to drink water. Why would you? All you're going to do is keep peeing it out. That's all you're going to do. So if you want to get something, get something you really enjoy once you get this skill. That's what it boils down to. So it's the purging process. Like I told you, I was in Egypt. I tried to make a plan. Well, since the pollution, maybe if, I'll, if I have a water thing once a weekend, you know, once a month, that'll help me purge myself out. That didn't even work. I said, I ain't going to sit up here and drink. I don't want to drink it. That's what happened. And all I'm going to do is keep running to the bathroom making my life difficult. That's all that's going to happen. So you keep growing. That's all it's about, growing. And you yeah, learn. It's, a, it's, it's a kind of uh, another state when uh, no intake, the natural. Natural state is no intake anything inside. Right. When you start to do something inside, it's like a sort of medicine or sort of some pushing yourself to do some something, some process. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, more like not natural already. Not natural. Not natural. Right. Now this is what we're dealing with. Now can you read it on that number one? But before we do it, this is what makes it easier. We've been doing these qigongs, the other meditations, the microcosmic orbit, the Merkaba, mm -hmm. open up the energy channels. But where is all this energy coming from? And it's like unlimited. It's, it's invisible. That's what the average person cannot see because it's invisible. But most people do. They do got religion all around them when they're talking about a Holy Spirit, a Holy Ghost, all this other stuff. But now we're in an age where we can start dissecting on what we're working with because we want self-knowledge now. Now, we in the air. And I keep saying time, I've got a friend who calls himself an airitarian. That's not far-fetched. It isn't. And then me, we use the word breatharian, that's just breathing. So some people used to try to laugh at us and say, I can't believe a human being just could go around just breathing air. But we ain't laughing no more. Yeah, we can. Because let's see what the air is. Now look at the definition. The invisible gaseous substance surrounding the earth. All right. The invisible gaseous substance. That's surrounding the earth. We're living in a gaseous substance. We are in something. That's surrounding the earth. Nothing gets away. And it's in a gaseous state. Now what does that mean? If the solid is more solid, the molecules packed together. And then we said you're going to what? Have liquid days? So that means the molecules moving faster than the solid. What's the gaseous state? That just means that the molecules is even moving faster. So fast you just can't see it. 
with your physical eyes, but that don't mean it don't exist. We're living in it. We're breathing it. It's all around us. It's tangible. Can't get out of it. We're breathing chair. We're breathing. Right. All that stuff. Side. And our thoughts is the first phase of physical matter. The gaseous state. Now, science will say oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen. And the average person say, we need oxygen in order to live. No, you don't. You need more than oxygen. That's why the whole mixture is here. It's the whole mixture to give life. The creation knew what it was doing, or it just when they just had oxygen out here. It didn't do that. All right, keep reading. Okay. Uh, a mixture mainly of oxygen and nitrogen. In a mixture. That means somebody was cooking up a batch of mainly oxygen and nitrogen. It's not a very pre precise uh, definition because if you go to pine uh, forest, the mixture there like mostly like pine oil, like this pregnant soils, right? All right, now you're getting more technical, right? Yeah. So that means that there's changes happening around with right. these mixtures? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely, because you know, notice that they say that definition mostly. mostly yeah. So that counts everything else. Right. But we still got the hydrogen and the argon. We got water in the atmosphere. That's why yes. people say, well, what about the water? It's in the atmosphere. Right. Everywhere you go. Right now, you feel it. We in it, but you can't see it, so it's far-fetched. Until a person breaks it down and gives you some knowledge on what you live in. And then it's up to you to put yourself to the test to use that knowledge and see it for yourself. Whoa. So that's why we're self-sufficient. You got everything you need. The main thing is food. That's what we're trying to master. You got the food now. The food of life. You're living in it. So the air. Now, look up the word prana. This is real key. That's the ancient Sanskrit word, but why did they grab that word? And why do we call ourselves, well, I call myself a breatharian, you know, playing around with a word, but it's the same thing. And then in metaphysics, they say we got auras around us, but now in science, they say we got this electromagnetic field. They all using the same words, but they all mean the same thing. But let's see what they said in ancient times using the word prana. Prana is a noun from Hinduism meaning breath considered as a life-giving force. Breath that's considered as a life-giving force. So we're already living in the air, the substance, you're breathing air. So what they said is the breath, and then religion and what, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, Adam was what? Given the breath of life. He got some consciousness. He probably got aware of what he was living in. We don't even need to say he was the first man. We, we know that ain't even the case now. Somebody learned the technology. That's what made them different. That's what changed the ball game. And it's considered yeah. life-giving. Life-giving force. And the sentence they give is, uh, prana is seen as a universal energy which flows and currents in and around the body. Whoa! And it's seen as a universal energy. That's a current that flows in and out of the body. It's, that's air. They are using another word. It's a substance. They didn't have to say oxygen, nitrogen. They didn't use that. They just said it circulates. It's the life-given force. And we're living in it. So the three treasures of life is what? Eating, drinking, and breath. You'll die a lot quicker without breath. But when we start defining what food is, what is it? Nutrition, nourishment. You know, we'd be playing around with some words. Energy, that's why you're eating. Oh. Drink is the same way, a liquid form. And then you go back to that breath. It's going to lead you right back here. And when you master the breath or understand what you're living in, you don't need those other ones. That's the greatest, what? Substance in life. So that's why they say prana, it circulates through us. And that's what we was doing when we was doing Qigong this morning. It was circulating through us, all around us. That's what we're doing. 
And the more you do it, the stronger it becomes. Your connection to it. Everybody's connected to it. It's just a person who lives off of it has more awareness than somebody who don't. That's all. They're a better energy worker. You might as well fess up. I'm more spiritual than you. Okay, whatever that means. I'm working spirit more than you are. There ain't no competition. That's just what it's saying. <laughs> Somebody did some work. Woke up. All right. Now, we looked up prana. Any more to it? Yep. That's all we need. Now, let's see what the Chinese are saying. Look up chi. See what they say. See if it's different. It says uh, chi, the twenty-second letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, one, two, one. <laughs> That's the right one. Uh, oh, this is interesting. <clears throat> Transliterated in the literal Latin style as k c h, as in Christ, or in the modern style k k h, as in. I right, give chi as the Chinese say yeah. chi for energy. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> The circulating life force whose existence and properties are the basis of much Chinese philosophy and medicine. All right. The circulating life force. Now, even a medical profession today, what do they try to say? If they don't use the word electromagnetism, they'll call it life force energy. They're using the same words. So they try to say people was primitive. No, anybody wasn't primitive. They, if anybody's primitive, they just borrowed everything or got it from what they was already saying, try to claim it for themselves. Act like they smart. But they got nothing to do with it. <laughs> so chi is the circulating life force energy that's what? That's moving, flowing in and around the body. In and around the body. What is that? The air. The circulating life force, the thing to give life. That's what they're saying. That's what gives life. Everything else don't give life. It's just something you're playing with. It's an illusion. That's all it is. I don't need no apple to give me no life. That sounds crazy. But for some people, it don't sound crazy. Not putting nobody down. That's the level of perception where a person's at. For me, I'm up there. Oh, man, it's going to be all on my rib, my liver. I got to go take a nap. Pretty soon, I got to use the bathroom. That's too much. But it depends what level of perception you're in. You either deal with that or you're going to transform yourself to love and the, what? The life force is already going through you. It ain't say you got to force it to go through you. It's already going through you. Mm. All life. It's a given. All you're doing is increasing the flow that's coming into you through meditation. It says from Chinese, Mandarin dialect, uh, he literally air or breath. Air or breath. See what they're saying? It wasn't far fetched or mythical. Some people said, oh, that's same Crete words, that was Chinese words, that was just for eight. It's for now. It's air. Wow, the right mixture. It gives life. That's what it is. Oh, man. This is good, ain't it? Mm -hmm. To know what we're working with. That's how you make your plan. If you don't know that, you ain't got no plan. Now to, to go to your full resurrection. All right, now look up key. See what the Japanese are saying. <laughs> key is the circulating life force whose existence and properties are the basis of much Chinese philosophy and medicine. That's what's familiar to the other one. And actually, it's the same definition. Same definition. That's dealing with the Japanese. You got the Japanese key? You know what? I put, I got QI. Let me see. Oh, yeah. yeah for me. It might have been the same one. Yeah, it's a whole different spelling. The KI. Oh. Oh, here we are. Uh, key in Japanese literally means breath and air. Here we go. The Japanese are saying key means breath or air. Different language. Okay. It ain't, they ain't say nothing different. Yeah. Um, this is the one I gave the definition. Hold on a second. I'll get the most concise definition. Breath or air, saying the same thing. But everybody's fighting against whose word is the truth and 
Then I see some people, they want to act intellectual. Well, this means this, and this is at a higher level than this. No, it's not. They all talking the same thing. We ain't got to make it difficult. Uh, he is the <laughs> Japanese word for air, atmosphere, flavor, heart, mind, spirit, feelings, humor. And Whoa! Now, okay, let's back up. Sage one slowly. Sure. Ki is the Japanese word for air or breath, mm -hmm. but also what? Atmosphere. Atmosphere. Now listen at that word, atmosphere. Atmos is dealing with the cosmos. Don't we say that cosmic energy is bombarding the earth? And sphere just means it's going around something, going around things. Like, okay, we live in an atmosphere. You're living in it. The air, the breath, you're breathing in it. There's atmospheres after atmospheres of circulating energy. All right, and what's the other word? Uh, flavor. Flavor. Heart. Your heart? Open up your heart. Mind. Mind. Spirit. Spirit. There's that word. Feelings. Now, stop right there for the yeah. word spirit and feelings. So we've been playing with that word spirit. Spiritual. I'm more spiritual. Well, spiritual goes with the air. That's what they say in that, don't it? Mm. The circulation of air. Who can master? That's what determines you more spiritual. <laughs> Ain't no fight no more. Who can work with the forces? It ain't got nothing to do with because you're smiling. I mean, that counts. I'd rather deal with a person that's smiling than not. But who got the knowledge on how to use the forces? That determines spirit. <laughs> oh, man, this is good, ain't it? And feelings. That's why they said we was looking at that uh, movie, The Secret. They were saying it's one thing that have the thought, but nature or the universe is going off of the feeling you have behind it. The feeling of the intent. That's what manifests it. So it's the same thing. Spirit, you are a spirit. We put feelings behind everything, don't we? It's the feeling. That's what manifests it. That's what's creating your reality. How you feel about it. That's why I said being a breatharian is a feeling state. If you don't know how it feels, you don't know what to look forward to. Don't expect nothing. You walk into it. That's how you know. It's an experience. And then when you know what it feels like, you got it. You're spiritual. <laughs> you woke up. All right. Uh, we've also got humor and intention. Attention is there. Intent. That's what you say. Your intent. Yep. They just playing with words. Same thing. Mind. Mind. And will. And will. Strengthen your willpower. That's what we're dealing with. Some people got stronger willpowers than others, but they still relate that to the air you're living in. So therefore, let's take it to a higher level. Everybody's using this word consciousness now. But they don't know what it is. Consciousness is the air. It's a substance. It's going through us, around us, around the earth. You can expand your consciousness or get your consciousness closed in. It's the air. How are you working with it? They are scared to say it. They're trying to deny it. This is consciousness. You're setting in information that's conscious. See that? See, the reason why people don't want to say it, especially the science arena, then they have to say there's a God. They don't want to go that route. You're living in a big consciousness. Probably living in somebody else's imagination. <laughs> That's what it's dealing with. So hey, everybody playing with that other word, consciousness. And like my mother used to say, I don't like that word consciousness. I say, why? She said, it remind me of common science. <laughs> she like playing with the words. But That's what we're dealing with. It reminds me of that part that James Arthur Ray in The Secret was saying that if you go to a scientist and you ask what created the universe, he'll say energy. He'll ask him to describe energy. He'll say energy goes into form, through form, and out of form. It can never be created nor destroyed. Right. And the same if you go to a theologian and you ask what created the universe, he'll say God, and you'll ask him to describe that. 
And he'll say something like, God goes into form, through forms, and out of form, and can never be created or destroyed. Right, they both talking the same thing, just coined a different language, and they got the nerve to have a debate. They both sound stupid. How can you debate? You both saying the same thing. See, the deception is the what? The um, uh, lack of, how should I say? The misinterpretation of thoughts and ideas. That's what got everybody fighting against each other. They all saying the same thing. And at the end of the day, we're living in the substance. Whatever you try to describe it is, but everybody needs it in order to live. It is going through us, giving us life, animating us, and we are it. That's powerful, ain't it? Not just us, the squirrel, the chicken, the dog, the cat. They all using the same thing. That's consciousness having fun. The plant, the bug, everybody. I can't even say I'm a higher life form than that. No, you ain't. Not in the squirrel's eyes. Right. You don't think so. I seen a deer one time. It was during the rut season. And I guess he was after this female. He was ready to fight me for the female. I was like, I don't want her. <laughs> He ain't look at me as being a higher life form. He was ready to do battle with me that day. He started going his little feet like this. I'm like, hey, wait. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going the other way. <laughs> right. Now, before the rut season, he probably would have ran off. Uh-uh. He was ready to go to battle. <laughs> to get his offspring going. Now, let's look at the word. This is going to get good. We did... Air, prana, chi, ki. We learned what the atmosphere is. All talk about the same thing. Now we're going to go to the ka. The ka is what they use in Africa. Coming from northern Egypt especially. Yeah. And we did that Merkaba meditation. I remember in Hawaii there is a word of mana. Mana. Also like yeah, Right, there's more words we could get. See, we're just playing around with these cultures. Yeah, all these other words, Hawaii, Amanamuna. Remember I showed you that uh, energy system last yeah, night? Yeah, I brought, yeah. It goes hand in hand. That's what it's dealing with. All cultures had it around the planet. How could you not? Everybody wasn't stupid in the past. In, the, in the, our Slavic tradition, the name is Jiva. Here we go. More <laughs> names for it. We could go on and on and on. But people get caught up in these names and definitions think they talk about something different for their culture. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you break it, so that's why when I traveled around the world, that was a good thing for myself. I was still living in the same thing. It didn't change because I was somewhere else. I was still living in the air. The definition given is, in ancient Egypt, the supposed spiritual part of an individual, human being or God, which survived with the soul after death, and could reside in a statue of the person. All right, now that's going a little higher. Now let me get this definition. I got one right here. The ka is light. Okay. That's why the Egyptians used to say, you got your light body is the ka, ka and the ba is the physical body. But the light body is over the physical body. That's their thing. But they go on to say it's electricity, electrical. Now you can read that one. I already got a good one written down. Ka light, electrical light body. Electrical light body. So it's more than just a light body. So when we see it, they use the word electrical. That's why we got the word electricity. It's an electrical light body. So that's why in today's science, what is they saying? We got an electric magnetic field. They just went back and got what Egypt was saying. They went back to the car. Act like they made it up and discovered it. No, you didn't. It's the electrical light body. All right. Electrical light body circle, uh, circle tree that exists identically and simultaneously in the third to sixth dimensions. I love this. And ultimately functions in those dimensions. Now let's back up one more time. Read it one more time, but slowly. Okay. Uh, electric, uh, the Ka light, electrical light body, uh, circle tree that exists identically and simultaneously. That exists identically and simultaneously. 
Because we're walking around right now in our Bob. We all notice this. This is what the Egyptians were saying. They were just breaking it down. We see each other, the Bob. But it, there's something else that is, exists that's on all of us that's simultaneously right now that's with us. In the third and sixth dimensions. Now listen at this. In the third and sixth dimensions. We got to break this down. Third, sixth, I should say. Huh? I guess I should say third through sixth dimensions. Third through sixth dimensions. Oh man, this is good. Now the third through sixth dimensions. Let's get this. What are they talking about? Because that's a big word in well, those three, people. Three dimension is our dimension. Mm-hmm. And why would that fourth, be? Our... Fourth dimension is spiritual dimension. Now I'm glad he said that. That's where we're going. And this... see if they think this is like a daddy, something like that. Well, let's break it down now. We're going to make it make sense. We got our seven major chakras. Remember, we went over them how the first chakra is the physical body. So that's the body. And you said we live in a third dimension. Now, why do we live in the third dimension or do we have to? When you're eating, you live in the third dimension. Yeah. Everything is illusion, yeah. It's at the top of the uh, intestines. Remember I said your sacrifice to the Lord is what you put in your intestines? So yeah, the average person living in the third dimension. But once you get to your heart chakra, which is the fourth, that's the fourth dimension. And a person who lives on prana or bringing his energy is bringing it in through the heart chakra. That's why they keep saying open up your heart in spirituality. Think through your heart. Whoa! And the heart is the biggest or the longest, how should I say, your electromagnetic field that can be measured, the heart goes out the furthest. And that's, and that's due to the equipment or how they're tracking it. Meaning to go out further than what the equipment is saying. That's the only equipment they got that can track it. And it goes 500 times more out than the thoughts of the brain. It's the carrier wave. So when they talk in dimensions, it ain't spooky no more. Yeah, humans live in a third dimension. Below the third chakra. They're eaten and all this other stuff. Blocked up. Just like any other animal. So if you want to live in that dimension, you're going back to the grave. But the fourth dimension on up, that's where you're talking the spiritual ball. And that's, what is that word spiritual? Was well, dealing with a frequency in the air. The air is coming in differently. Let's just make it make sense. The prana, the chi, the ki is coming into the body. You're aware of it. You brought it in. It's everybody's living in it. But a person who has more spiritual knowledge know how to use the air a lot better. The energy that's in it. That's all we're saying. Psychic abilities, oh, they're special. Everybody got it. Some people just more good at it because it's the air our thoughts is traveling through. Why can't they do it if you can't do it if you're living right in it? That don't even make sense, do it? That means that you're spiritually blind, spiritually shut off. You don't know how to work what you're living in. You don't know who you are. That's all it's saying, ain't it? Mm. Oh, man. Did I hear you correlate the third chakra with the third dimension? Yep. So could we correlate the fourth Chakras and the fifth with the other? With the other dimensions. Okay. Fourth, fifth, sixth, thing, all the way to the cosmic. Yeah, this is like a 1,000 lotus leaf. Yeah. It's a connection with the brown, right? With right. The highest dimension. Yeah. Here we go, the big dimension, dealing with the cosmos. Yeah. That's what we're dealing with. And that only opens up if these other ones is open. It's making sense now, ain't it? Uh-oh. So you at least want to become a breath they're in, which the definition is eat very little or none at all. And however, you should go to none at all one day. If you want to go keep growing. Can you say that definition again? To eat very little or none at all. From a media. And very little, that just, you know, food is nothing but a what? Experience. Oh, I never tasted that before. Okay, that's enough. Oh, hey, big deal. Yesterday I was uh, uh, reading again, uh, about this involution from humans to monkey. Yeah. So there is uh, already like a uh, uh, study of archaeologists that say... Humans to monkeys. 
this is not like the Darwin theory, but opposite. Opposite. So the human degradate to monkey. But what interesting, it says human degradate to monkey because of their habits of uh, wrong eating. <laughs> right. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. So if you do this third dimension and you start to eat meat and more like hard things, boom, you degrade to lower case, like to animal world. Right. You're an animal. <laughs> yeah. A lower animal. So when you start eating that way, you go down to the lower animal. Yeah. So what is human doing? They're doing the same thing animals are doing. So in, in the... Looking for food, yeah. sex, shelter. That's what right, animals right, do. Right, right. So in future, maybe more monkey coming, not more humans from monkey, but more monkey from right. humans. Right. <laughs> and the monkeys are set on their diets better than humans are. Yeah. And you know, it's like that's how we caricaturize like carnivorous you know, brute men, you know, that are just eating flesh as uh, right. animals. As, you know, that animal. So. Right. Cut off. That's what we're saying. And we're just coming back the other direction, but again, this knowledge helps to know what you're living in, know what you can work with, and this will make your journey better. Much easier. Instead of going blind, I just know we ain't supposed to eat. You got a, a tape on your mouth and ain't got no plan. And that plan right there is a Presbyterian plan you just did. That came right out of you. That's it. You're working on yourself. And the body will start healing itself and everything along the way. That's part of the byproduct. And not eating is a byproduct of you wanting to live that way. You love it. You start loving that light. You start loving that new feeling. You get too heavy, you start saying, man, I got to get back what I was doing before. You bounce back. You say, I'm staying here this time. I know what it's going to be like if I do all that again. That's what you do. It's interesting what you just said. You start to love the light. Love the light. light. But it's the light, it's like the luminous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of jumping in and out, compromise it. Because that's why they say you can't serve two masters. One or the other. You'll hate the one, despise the other, and all that other stuff. But when you start loving that other one, you don't want the other one no more. Man, this is good. And then the things we got going for us, just in the physical body, we've been putting it down so much, but we live in a perfect body. It's perfect. The blood in the body, the hemoglobin, automatically attracts light to it. The air to it. That's why they keep saying in these definitions, it's going through us and around us. But we keep thinking of just the air we breathe in. But even the fluids, just like when the river is going, you can feel the energy of the river, right? Mm -hmm. So this is always flowing. We don't pay attention to that. You don't feel that energy, how it's going through your hand right now, but it, but it is. There's a river that's open. And it's bringing energy to it. It has its own energy. It, a big thing here in the West is what? High blood pressure. The blood got compromised. It's still flowing, but not like it should. So it's bringing a lower vibration. And all you got to do is reverse your habits. Yeah, you can beat high blood pressure. I've seen people who do it. But the doctor will tell you, you know, we just have to treat it. You can't reheal yourself. You got to treat it now. But that's not the truth no more. Whatever you was doing, the body's perfect. It can whoop that disease if you are coupled with the right knowledge. That's powerful, ain't it? It's the right knowledge body you can you see that's why it's a powerful thing to learn how to heal yourself and then it's even more powerful if you got sick and know why you got sick and you know how to get out of it because you know exactly what you've done you don't need to blame nobody i ate too much cake i was uh drinking i was uh right you know you what you did to yourself let me turn the ship around. You go somewhere in heal like an animal out in the wild. Not eating, not drinking, healing out in nature. And pretty soon you come back this new person. Well, I had to go heal myself. <laughs> oh, man. And then we got water. Now we're mostly fluid. We're mostly liquids. That automatically draws energy to it. We got it made. You really ain't even got to try hard. 
Even the meditation ain't got to be a chore. The blood draws energy to us, the water, and then we got our neuromelanin. Everybody's born with that. The pineal gland, when you see a baby being born in a mother's womb, it's this black dot in his head. That's the pineal gland. And it's black because I forgot what they call it scientifically, but it's in this black substance. That's the neural melanin. That's before the body started even forming out. Whoa, look like a big it's black eye. What is that? Melanin. And everybody got it. And this grabs energy to the body so we can make these signals. We got it made, already structured that way. That's why now people are just coming out, you're already a light being. So people say, oh, I got to go get my light body. You already got a light body. That's the great deception. You see how just on those player words, a person went blind. I ain't got a light body. I got to go get one. Who told you that? You already got one. You got to go get one. You already got one. It's already working with the light. Always have. <laughs> Whoa. Great deception. Somebody made you blind. Off of words. That's what we're dealing with. That's why it's the war of words. I'm not warfare right now. That's why I say I'm on a breath campaign. Campaign? What you doing? I'm in spiritual warfare. Open up people's eyes. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking to myself, it's like I'm sitting here listening to you, and it's like it feels like your talks are just so historic. <laughs> Even though we're sitting right here, we're sitting next to, like, this is historic to have somebody walking around saying these things <coughs> completely paradigm changing. Whoa. And he's making it easy and simple for us. Yeah. It's not complicated. <laughs> Demystifying it. Yeah. Demystifying it. Yeah. Simple. That's how it should be because we live in a simple creation with abundance all around us. Look at all those pine. Look at all that. That's abundant. We've been brainwashed again. Abundance is how much money you have in a bank. Here we go again. Made us blind. You got abundance all around you. Calling on things. Pulling it to you. Whoa. The well, one man, huh? Well, if you don't have your health, that's not going to even matter. That ain't going to even matter. Nature ain't looking at the money in the bank. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to make the point. Right. It ain't going to even matter. You ready to die. Yeah. Like two days ago, the CEO of Oracle died. Like 62. Right. Young man, Brilliant. 62. Right. Didn't mean a hill of beans. That's why they keep saying we got to go over this teaching one day about uh, selling your soul to the devil. So we don't know what that means, but there is a meaning to it. Selling your soul to the devil. Whoa. And then when we think of that, people will go to Hollywood. In order to be rich and famous in this world. You got to sell your soul. Then they going into all this other stuff. That ain't what it's talking about. Everybody's selling their soul to the devil. They don't know what the soul is. They don't know who they are. The what devil, is. that's just a phrase of saying you're ignorant. Evil is just life backwards. You're ignorant to what's going on. So all we're doing is, whenever you give a person information or knowledge, and they do it, and they come up out of their situation, you just, or they start use it, keeping universal laws. You just destroy the demon. You just transform the demon into an angel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa, it ain't meant to go no more. We like all that unseen stuff. Nah, this is where the, these are the angels right here. Floating all over the place. The spirits. Already got a light body. <laughs> All we're doing is thawing it out. It gets that. It was in the third dimension so long. We're thawing it out more and more. Fourth dimension. Fifth dimension. That's what we're dealing with. As soon as you say something, it manifests it. That's why you just got to start watching what you say. That's how powerful we are. But it's going in degrees on our understanding. As soon as you think something, watch your thoughts. That's what we're dealing with. Then all of this open up. God Almighty. We're scared to say it. We might as well say it. The drop of the ocean is still the ocean. 
Man, whole nother life. And breatharianism, see this, this is what I got to say again. It's big to us because it's new. But it's a minor power. Minor city power. That's what opens you up to these other ones we were just talking about. I got so much work to do, it's pathetic. I'm working right now. All right. So what? I'm, yeah, I'm not eating. I got other work to do. So expand my consciousness. So I can become up here. Whoa, I can lead a planet then. <laughs> not through the grave. Right. That's what we talk about the immortal message. All the scriptures said it, so now we can see it. How do we get sick? Now, we can't see this now. We're smart enough to figure it out. There's a pandemic on the planet that were preventable diseases. That means it didn't have to happen. That's what they're saying. It could have been prevented. But everybody got it. How did they catch it? They just got cursed? No. Lack of knowledge. That's all I dealt with. And now we're waking up where people is beating it here and there. Huh. What happened? And the person went on a journey to beat it. I met a woman in Israel who beat cancer. And she'll look at you in her face. It was a journey. And the thing about it, the lifestyle that she went on, she lived that right now. What, like, as soon as I beat the disease and then I quit? She living that new lifestyle. She woke up. She ain't sun gazing just for no play no more. She out there when the sun come up, this is what healed me. Breathing. Less stress. Watch what she put in her body. It's all simple. It ain't no big plan. Oh, man. We made it all plain this day, don't we? But like I said before, ain't nobody can hide knowledge from me. The books is right here. The books is already open. Oh, man. We just opening up the books. <laughs> we are the books. We are the books. Know everything. Oh, man. We're playing hide and seek with ourselves. That's why the person says, I just found the Lord. Well, where was he hiding? <laughs> I found the Lord. Where was he hiding? <laughs> Under the table. <laughs> Man, but that's the game we play with ourselves. We're going from levels and degrees. But this is awesome. So again, we got some good meditations going on. But see, that's what we're talking about. That's another one, the reproduction system. And that's dealing with, with our sexual system. That's what they call it. The reproduction system. So we can take off that re, or we can keep the re on there. That's what we're doing. We keep reproducing things now. We're regenerating things. Things are circulating. But our body, when we watched that uh, video yesterday, why do you say that word? Auto. Autophony. Oh. Autophony? Autophony. I forgot the O. Autophony is when the cells, how they really regenerate themselves. How they recycle themselves. What happened to the dead cell? And your body's actually using it. That's something, man. So we are a reproduction system or a full whole sexual system. A healthy body is a sexual body. And what that just means is the whole reproductive system is reproducing itself. We're constantly recreating ourselves. That's what's happening. So all the cells are like asexual. They all like asexual, basically. But we're transformed for what's needed for them. That's what they talk about the stem cell research is so strong for. It can create itself into any, mostly any cell it wants to. If it's needed, the need is there. So immortality is a given. I don't know why we laughing at it now. They laughing no more. People used to say, everybody dying. We understand that. But we ain't laughing no more. <laughs> we done went into the fourth dimension now. We ain't laughing no more. This is serious. You can keep on going, you know, with that mind. We ain't, we ain't thinking that way no more. We came too far to give up now. <laughs> Long way collectively. This is where we at. Oh man, we're in a good age too. The information's out here. All we're doing is allowing our body to keep re regenerating itself. It does that on its own. It don't even need us. All it needs us to do is get out the way. And give it a good plan at least. It'll take care of the rest. 
Before you know it, that's what the that's what the crossover is. When you realize to get out the way. That's the crossover. <laughs> something that comes to mind is a verse from some Gnostic scripture or something. I think the uh, Gospel of uh, Philip or one of those. And it said, if you want to know where the uh, where the end is, then go back to the beginning. Right. Because where the beginning is, is where the end is. And so the knowledge you're talking about is, is ancient from the beginning, mm -hmm. but yet we had to go through all this to re-arrive at that knowledge. To go in a full circle. Yeah. Now we know. Yep. We want the knowledge. Go back to the beginning. We went back to Genesis. That's what we did. The genes. <laughs> oh man, this is good. So, y'all want to take a break and then we'll go into another good meditation? Right. We got to let all this soak in for a minute. Thank you so much. Oh man. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Ta da. Thank you. <laughs>